Can I have two claps, please? One, two. One. Oh no, that's rubbish. One, two. Now, can I have them so all the cameras can see it? Could you do that for me? One, two. Thank you very much. Okay. It's trying to be amusing. It was very amusing. Please continue, Colin. Well, Gaston, I'm so trusting you. No, I'm not. Correctly. It's not a competition. So, Is it not? No. In my um, bowl, I sometimes lose words in my head. <laughs> so you no, want to make it a, a closest no, no, to competition? No, it's not a competition. No, let's do that then. There's no point in being a competition. No, no, no. Because I'd cast on way more than no, you. No, no. So let's swizz around. Let's get over to the stove and get that first colour dyed up. Something. Palsy. My father called it the palsy. Why are we talking about this? You don't remember me being trying? No. Always. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Bakery Bears video show. Oh my goodness, we're back. We're back. We don't mess around here at Bakery Bears HQ. It might only be five days into a brand new year. Yeah. But this is just too exciting to not get cracking because we've got so many amazing things to share with you and it yeah. all starts today. We have, we have, we have. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Brand new year. Yes. Brand new show. Yes. From Mrs. K. Jones. Yes. Today sees the very first episode of the Yarny Book Club. Yarny Book Club. Now, if you want to encapsulate all the things that we love, like yarn, mm -hmm. classical music, something lovely to knit, yeah, and a wonderful book, yeah, all in one show, yeah. Oh my goodness, I can feel my heart beating faster. Amazing. <laughs> And that is what the Yarny Book Club is. Very exciting. It's very exciting, isn't it? It's a beautiful colourway to start with, I've got to say. Two beautiful colourways, actually. It's going to be wonderful, because what's going to be so great as well is through the course of the year, six episodes, and Kay's each time going to give you a little book review, too, of the book that's yeah. been the inspiration. Yeah, yeah. there's no obligation to read the book. It's no. not that kind of a club. You know, it's not, you don't have to, of course, if you want to, by all means, go ahead and read it. But the focus is the yarn, really, and the association with the book. Yeah, but I will give a little bit of insight into the book and what made me want to read it. And yeah. the little bit of the storyline yeah. and then how I've linked it to the yarn colourway. It's all very exciting. Very exciting. And with some lovely classical music in the background, too. Yes, we oh, hope yes. you enjoy that. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. As Kay said, though, my goodness, we hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Yes. Oh, yes. Ours was lovely. We watched, of course, we mentioned on our last show that we watched the amazing, is it The Bishop's Wife? Oh, yes, that yeah, was yeah. excellent. I don't want to call it the wrong thing, because it doesn't sound very Christmassy, The Bishop's Wife. No, it doesn't. You're right. And it's not, like, as we spoke about this before, it's not really a Christmas film, but it, it set at Christmas, yeah. We followed that up with The Shop Around the Corner. The shop Around the Corner, Excellent James Stewart film. It's it's the original film to You've Got Mail. You've Got Mail was like a reimagining of it. What was so cool was to watch The Shop Around the Corner and then You've Got Mail. Both great films. Yeah, we, that's what we did. Yeah. What was really fun was seeing the scenes which were sort of taken directly from the original yeah. and also seeing the bits which they discarded from the original. Yeah. It was really yeah. sort of cool yeah. to see yeah. because yeah. You, you, sometimes you get a reworking of a film and it is just, you, it's the, a new version of the same mm. film. This mm. is, a, it's like a totally different it is, film. It is, you can see elements. a few little bits. Yeah, you can see elements of it in both of the films. Like the threads, the underlying threads. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah, it's a brilliant film. If you've never watched it, it's an old black and white film, James Stewart, and I can't remember the woman's name that's in it. No. Uh, but there's also one of the main characters is in The Wizard of Oz. He's actually The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and somebody, Morgan. Yeah. Henry Morgan. Anyway, uh, anyway. yeah, brilliant film. And it, as Kay mentioned, we followed that up with You've Got Mail, and now yeah. we're into Sleepless in Seattle. Yes. We're just having like a... Comfort film watch, aren't we? And then we've got to watch... My favourite of all of them is when Harry met Sally. Harry met Sally. We're going to watch that one after you. Brilliant. Yeah. Look, yeah. this is all very lovely, but we've got way too many amazing things we to do, share. We do, we do. New year, new mm. cast on. Yes. Oh, yes. Plus, an absolute smorgasbord... Of finished things. Yeah, it's like 
busting. Yes. A busting what's off your needles. Wow. So I think it's <laughs> way time that I said for the first time in 2024. 24. Where's Jack Bauer when you need I him? I know. It's Jack Bauer year. Has anybody else realised this? I'm so excited by this prospect and I've got to think of something to do that's Jack Bauer-ish this year because it's the year of 24. Oh, yes. Yeah. So without further ado, I should say, Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Okay, so the first thing on my needles is a new cast on. Very exciting. And talking of the Wizard of Oz, actually, that we just mentioned briefly, it's in my Wizard of Oz bag that I made, gosh, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. And it's a new pair of socks for Dan. I've just had a thought of doing something quite fun. What? It's a brand new year. It's yes. the very first show. <clears throat> We've both got brand new cast-ons. This year, we will produce... I mean, it normally works out. I think, funnily enough, I think it is about 24 shows. Is it really? Yes. Wow. So it's about 24 shows. The question perhaps should be, how many new cast-ons will you have this year? Right. It's not a competition, because you would, of course, win. (laughs) Yeah, I probably would win. Would you like to stick a marker down in the sand? 24 shows. Okay. How many new cast-ons do you think you'll have this year? Why don't you play along at home? Stick your comment, stick your comments, stick your guess in the show notes. And it'd just be fun, won't it, to look back at at the end, maybe this time next year. It's tricky. And we'll see. It's tricky because I cast on for various things, you know. I'll have projects... That I'm showing you now, but then I'll have designs, I'll have other other element, you know, like secret things, and so it's, it's tricky. I mean, so do, I'm, do I have a new cast on every time? I probably no, probably don't. But then, I don't know, maybe thirty five. Oh, I don't know. Okay, that's just a random, complete guess. M- my my guess for you was going to be thirty one. So I've now got to guess for you. Yes. Oh, gosh. And please do play ten. on my home. Ten. Okay. <laughs> ten. I'm going to say ten. I'm going to say twelve. Right, okay. This was just a bit of fun. Right, okay. There's no competition. No, right, I wonder right. how many projects you will cast on. Okay. You'll guess 35. Yeah. I'm saying 31. Okay. For me, you said... Ten. And I'm saying 12. Okay. What do you think at home? Let's see how we go with that, shall we? Comment in the show notes below. <laughs> we'll review this time next year. We're just going to be wildly out, aren't we? I think 31 is going to be close. Do you? I do. So... What is on my needles? It's a new pair of socks for Dan. I decided to cast these on New Year's Day, actually. You cast on something new, which is the thing you're knitting on now. So I was like, I want to cast on something new. I hadn't done anything, a new cast on over Christmas. I don't really do that, to be honest. I never get the urge to do a Christmas Eve cast on or Christmas, even a Christmas, Christmas Day cast on. And I think it's because... You know, people tend to cast on, like, if it's Christmas Eve cast on, a lot of people I know cast on Christmas socks, don't they? But I'm kind of over Christmas by that point, and I'm looking forward to the new year. So, yeah, I don't generally do that. But New Year's Day, I quite fancy doing something. So... The, the other thing is, though, as well, which I think is quite interesting, different people are different characters. Mm. And some people like to be part of the crowd... Yeah. And lots of people do like to Christmas join, Eve cast-ons. join in with everyone. Yeah, you absolutely. do not like to be part of the crowd. I don't generally You're, do I. That is go, true. You can go your own way. In the words of... That's a song. It is. Oh, people are screaming at home. Oh, Stevie Nicks. Oh, right. Fleetwood Mac. No, you see, I'm thinking of a Duran Duran song called My Own Way. Okay. Well, we'll do that then. And that's playing in my head now. Yeah, but no, that is true. I don't tend to, um, you know, like when you see a lot of people knitting the same thing and something goes kind of viral. And even if I really like the thing that's been knitted, I tend not to knit it because I feel like I'm not making the decision myself. Yeah. I'm being swayed by what everyone else is doing and the excitement which is difficult to resist sometimes and I have if you remember last year I knit one of those Sophie scarves because of all of the hoo-ha around it and everybody was knitting them and actually it, it turned out far too small it was to gauge and I used a recommended yarn and everything 
from my point of view, I knit it to the pattern anyway. You know, Dan's right, I don't tend to do that. But all that being said, I cast on these new socks on New Year's Day. And I just went into my stash and I thought, right, I'm just going to have a quick look and see what sock yarn I've got. And I found this that I purchased fairly recently and I'd kind of forgotten about it. I'm pretty sure this is now a discontinued yarn. It's Lendenor. Is that a French brand? It does say it's made... It does say, yeah, I mean, it sounds French, doesn't it? But it does say it's made in Italy, but it's paint sock. The colourway I'm using is 30, and it comes in these fantastic balls. And look at it, I mean, how lovely is this yarn? This particular colour is very autumnal shades, but I thought Dan would like this. And it's striped, but it's striped in a really particular way. It's really interesting yarn, this. I am very much enjoying it. I'll show you where I'm up to. So I've just finished the leg, and look how lovely this is. And what you get is you get these stripes, which it sort of gradiates down through a colour scene sequence but then it's interspersed in this case with a sort of beigey taupey sort of colour but what's interesting about the stripes is that within each stripe the stripes itself are sort of gradiated through it's really clever and really pretty now the yarn is a really high twist and I'm just checking how many plies it is I'm just pulling apart the yarn tail end. Yeah, it looks like a three ply. And it's a really high twist. Isn't it beautiful, that? The only negative I've got to say about this yarn is it is slightly inconsistent in that it does have areas where it goes quite thin. And I know I've said this before about yarn and people disagreed with me. That's totally fine, you know whatever your opinion is is your opinion isn't it I've got no problems with that but the fact of the matter is this skein here I've got in my hand does have areas where it goes quite skinny at first I was like oh but I'm carrying on with them because it's just so pretty and when the yarn is in its most consistent form if you like it's not all the time it doesn't go skinny all the time but within this leg that I've knitted it might have happened maybe 10 times something like that so it's fairly regular that you you get this sort of super skinny section and I'm just hoping that that doesn't cause a problem with wear I'm sort of risking it because it's so the yarn's so lovely and when it's a high twist I always find that your stitches look kind of different don't they yeah when it's a high twist it's great to knit with a lot um, of high twist yarn. Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it's just so pretty, isn't it, this yarn? So if you you can't... I, I purchased this recently and I got it from a, a European shop. I can't even remember the country it was in. It wasn't like one of the big European countries. It was a smaller one. I can't remember now. I think it was an Etsy shop. But I just Googled it. Just Google, if you want to look for it, just Google Len Dunor paint sock and see what comes up. I do have another skein, which is more like a rainbow colour. But I just thought Dan would like this one. So it's a 75-25, this yarn, and you get 420 metres. And it's mulesing-free and it's chlorine-free as well. It's produced in a chlorine-free way. And it's superwash, so, I mean, that's all really good, isn't it? Now, the the dilemma I've point I've reached is that I've done the leg and I've now got to do the heel. So I remembered... And this is really lucky. I remembered that recently also I purchased a few balls of Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight. And I remembered that last night and I'm like, oh, do you know what? I think some of those colours might match one of these pretty well. So I've got four of the colours here and I need to decide which one to use. So I've got Forest Heather. Now this one is a dark green, so it doesn't match any of the stripes. But I think it looks nice with the colours. I've then got Goldenrod Heather, which is a very similar gold to the gold stripe here. I've got Bamboo Heather, which is this lovely sort of slightly acidy green, which does match quite well the green. And the final one is this red, which is Hollyberry. Mm, I think that might be a bit too bright. I don't know, what do you think? Although the Knit Picks is a different kind of yarn. It's much softer than this. This is soft, 
But because it's a high twist, I always find that high twist yarns, when you've knitted them up, they don't have that super squishy bounciness because of the high twist but they're perfectly soft and nice but this one is also a multiplied yarn I think this one is a four ply but I think it will work fine so I've just got to decide on which of these will work the best I'm holding that green up aren't I but then I do quite like mm, I don't know if the dark green is too much of a contrast it's the green it probably is this one yes yeah I think it's that one it's not even a competition right Dan agrees so I'm going to use bamboo heather so I'm going to put in a, I'm going to do a heel flap because that's what fits Dan the best. But as I've said many times, actually, when I'm doing self-striping socks and I want to put in a heel flap, I do a heel flap, but I do a square turn. And I know a square heel turn, some people don't find it fits their heel very well, but it's fine for Dan. I've knit it several times and it's not a problem. But with a square turn, you don't have as many gusset decreases to decrease down winner so it, it affects the striping sequence much less so that's what i'm going to do then so that's a decision it's going to be bamboo heather for the heel and also for the toe and i think these are going to be a super lovely pair of socks i'm doing the magic loop as you can see and i'm using 2.5 millimeter which works generally for for me, I mean, I get a slightly looser gauge on Magic Loop than I do on double points using two and a half millimetre. But it's just the fit that, that we like, that Dan likes, and certainly that Bryony likes. She doesn't like socks that are like super sucky to your foot. And I don't either, to be fair. So I tend to use, when I'm knitting socks for us, I tend to use a 2.5 millimetre, but I do always recommend a 2.25 in my patterns because that gives you the sort of gauge that I think most people prefer. So, Dan Jones? Yes. What's on your needles? I need to cast on a new pair of socks. OK. I'm going to knit. I decided before it is the Sherwood socks, isn't ah. it? Is that yes. What you're gonna do? Yes, because I love those. I love the whispers in the walls. That was marvellous. Sherwood socks all the way. But that is not what I've got to show you today. No. Oh no, because I have cast on a brand new jumper, and yes. it is Let Lopey. Yes. And I have realised that all other yarns can go away. Oh, is that it then? You... Let Lopey is marvellous. Is that all you do now? It's not all I do, but it's it was like coming home. I mean, you know, oh. the Shetland. What, what's the one I'm knitting the Aaron Harpagansian for you? Um, Jameson and Smith Shetland it's Aaron. It's perfectly lovely. Aaron weight. Perfectly lovely. But it does not have the personality mm. of Let Lopey. There'd be tons of people who would hate knitting with Let Lopey. And also, tons of people who probably wouldn't like wearing Let Lopey. No, that's not completely true. It's not true. No. I'm just joking. And so, you know, it, it definitely is a niche market probably you know it well i don't i think a lot of people knit with let lopey so yeah. i don't know niche would be the right word well i just think that it's, it, it's a choice it is a choice because you need the right type of weather mm. you need to be able to wear it you need to be able to deal with knitting with it there's a lot of things yeah i, I don't think you'd be a let lopey knitter and wearer if you lived in australia that would I'd, be commitment I would, yeah, I would be impressed I mean, by your commitment to the cause. I think you'd have to live in a country where you get seasons cold enough. And we're close. We'd, we're only just close, you mm. know. I wish I could wear mine more often. Mm. But, you know, once you sort of get into the swing a bit. But look, Newcastle, these are the, are the colours. And, oh, my goodness, aren't they absolutely gorgeous? They are lovely. I mean, stupendous colours. We're knitting it as the pattern. No, I changed... Oh, you changed one? I did change I one of the colours. No, but I, I, oh, if cool. I get the yarn out, I'll probably remember which colour I changed. So Dan's colour, so this sort of deep red... How exciting is that? ...is the main colour. Have you got the ball band for that? There is a ball band, so I'm presuming it's a that. So, so the deep red is 9431. That's his main colour. And then these are the three other ones. Now... The pattern, the green I'm, that I chose here in the middle, in the pattern, that was like a, a another shade of brown. And I just thought, you know what? I, mm, I quite want to do a green. So I changed it for the green. So these three shades are 
This is... Is this Galaxy? I think mm. it is Galaxy. Is it? Wow. Look. I oh, think right. this dark colour is Galaxy. Which I used in the anniversary. I'm pretty sure it is. I can see all the sparks of colouring, yeah, yeah. which is 1707. And then the green is 1417. It's a lovely sort of mossy green. Murky green. And then the pale colour... We use we've used this colour before actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it's barley. One four one nine. So those are the colours, and all together, you know, they they're just lovely. I think. I think it's going to look so nice, isn't it? What's been fun is restarting to knit with Letlopi again because it behaves so strangely. You had a bit of an issue, didn't you? Yeah. Well, it split uh, immediately after casting on. Yes. Yeah, so, oops, a daisy. So I cast on and started knitting, and immediately it split, <laughs> and it's because. Of how you were, you even you were shocked at how yeah. loosely, loosely spun it was. Yeah, this the red. I mean, I just, it's a single ply, isn't it? Let low pee. Yeah. yeah, it's a single ply. Sections of of it are really thin. Like here is really thin. They're fine though. They don't break. So it's the bigger, fluffier sections. It's the big, fluffy sections that just pull apart. It's yeah. I mean, it really is very hand spunish. Once this you particular, adjust your technique, you're yeah, fine. this particular colour. But yeah, I think you've just got to get your hand back in, haven't yeah. you, to knitting with it. I mean, I know some people knit with the. Is it pl platelope? Pl platelope, the one yeah, that's yeah. like a plate, and that literally is like, whew, yeah, yeah, you know, a puff of wind, and it would pull apart. You've got to be so careful with that. But I think once it's knitted, it's actually quite a strong fabric yes when it's knitted oh absolutely it is um and it just feels like coming home it's the same designer that i've always knitted. Yeah. It's from one of the let lopey books i'll link the, the the pattern i think it's called is it go go deal go oh, be go i think it's go have you put a picture up of the pattern i will do okay and it's called go and it's just it's just lovely it's really lovely the design's really lovely as, it's as the colors you, though that i think really drew me in yeah, the colours are great. And it's funny, isn't it? Because I think colour does draw a lot of your attention to designs, doesn't yeah. it? And it, the, it, designs can look so different if it's in a colour palette that you love. You're like, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. But if you change the colour palette, you might not be drawn to it at all. So colour is a very subjective thing, I think, a very personal thing. But then I do think as well that some colour palettes appeal to a lot of people. And even it might be then that it's the design that you're drawn to, you know, if if because if if the colours are not your thing, you might just be sort of offended by it, <laughs> might you? But this colour palette, I think, is absolutely beautiful and sort of slightly festive in a way. So brand new cast on, very exciting. So looking forward to yes. knitting this one and just lovely to be back knitting with Let Lopi again. And I must not ever stop now. You know, no, always have. I think this is going to be a beautiful one. Yes. And this galaxy colour. Oh, I'm throwing all your stuff all over the shop well, th but that's you say it like that that's not normal this galaxy can you see oh look at that it's so beautiful it literally is like what, night what, sky what does mr mr carson say when he he thinks he's got to retire uh, it, it doesn't call it dropsy does it what does oh it... yeah he does when yeah. he's when he gets that shake the shaking business yeah. going on with his hand he said his father had it and they didn't know what it was, but he just called it drops. Was it drops? I, I think it was something, or something funnier. Like that? I just no, remember. it wasn't drops. No, it wasn't dropsy because that's what that man had that then Edith had a fling with. You right. remember that farmer who was in hospital? He oh, had right. he had dropsy. So it wasn't no, it was it was the something. Palsy. My father called it the palsy. Why are we talking about this? Because of you dropping. Because of me dropping. No, I've, I've not. Funny. I'm not like Mr. Carson. I just. She's got the palsy. I'm just clumsy. Uh, yes. <laughs> Always. Always. Always falling down the stairs. No, I haven't done that for many, many years. <laughs> not since my. But when she did. Tragic falling down the stairs. When she did. On I think it was New Year's Eve. They were big ones. I was not drinking. I had slippers on that were too big, and I was carrying a million things down the stairs, and I slid, and I went bump, bump, bump on my rear end and landed in a heap on the bottom step. At least, though, you went on, like, solid stone stairs at no. work, which you'd also done. I have also done that yes, yes, when yes. I was walking down the stairs in heels. Yeah, that was the problem. In the bank, yes. reading something that I was yes. taking from one floor to the next, not paying attention, fell down the stairs. Oh, dear. Yeah. 
Look. Right. That's enough of your comic tales. Yes. Let's have an... We're not expecting... Oh. Oh, it's Andre. Oh. Oh. Everybody. Oh, it's our Everybody. Man. Andre's here. He's bringing the mojo. Oh, he's bringing the mojo. Yes. Our mojo oh. has arrived. As long-term listeners will know, listeners, as long-term viewers will know, we are... We exist on Moju Ginger Shots. <laughs> we kind of do, yeah. It keeps tummies right and yeah. just it's the business. And anyway, we get it delivered directly from Moju. And it's a while since Andre's delivered it. It is a while. It's DPD and... Um, Andre's one of our delivery guys. Yeah, and we love him. And he's like, just imagine like a linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. And that's who he is. And he's just the nicest guy. He's the nicest... And Kay saw him before Christmas, didn't So I was on my walk on Christmas Eve, right? I was walking down the road towards the park. And then all of a sudden I saw this DPD van driving down the road and it stopped dead in the middle of the road and starts reversing. (laughs) And I'm like, what's going on? And I suddenly thought, oh my gosh, that's going to be Andre. And it was. He saw me, starts reversing, waves out of the window. Happy Christmas! (laughs) I was so thrilled, honestly. It just absolutely made my day. I just said to him now, I totally made my day seeing you. And I was, you know, just the fact you stopped dead and reversed. And I think, you know, what a lovely, lovely person to do that. And we should all have that attitude, shouldn't we, you know? L- he was like, working on Christmas Eve, yet he still had a smile on his face. And he still s- took the time to do that. But life, yeah. life, you know, there's all sorts. There's a yeah, balance yeah, of people. Yeah. There's good people and there's bad people. Yeah. And we all know good people and we probably all know bad people yeah. too. And, you know, it's just lovely when you interact with these good people. And we've got Absolutely. to know him really well. Yeah, Moved yeah. up from London a few he years did, ago. He met, did. met a woman who lives in Durham. They're now... Got two children. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just lovely. Yeah, just really nice, so... Anyway, what else? Thrilled to see him. So, after that lovely visit from Andre, my next project is now... This is something I picked back up that I, I put down way before Christmas, actually. And... I finished a load of stuff, so I picked it back up. And it's another of the hats that I designed. Can you remember? I knit that hat. I called it the tin roof hat because the yarn that I used was from Pixie Yarns and it was cat on a hot tin roof. So I thought I'll call it my tin roof hat. And it was sort of a grey colour. And it was the hat that I designed, I I guess. You know, I, I did design it that is just all knit stitches there's no purling involved and it's got the folded brim do you remember 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 that so I'd cast on another one which I think I showed you before but I'm now well on with this one because I I don't think I'll be lying if I said to you I've worn that first hat I think every day that I've gone for a walk and and I'll show you this one and then I'll explain the folded brim analysis so here is the second one and isn't this yarn just lovely so I've gone for a wintry white version with these lovely speckles this yarn is just gorgeous the dye job is absolutely beautiful it's from the wool barn and I've had it in my stash for some time I don't think it's Maya isn't it I don't think I have not seen her dye speckled yarn for some time. She tends to just do tonals, I think. The other thing about Maya is we interviewed her we did. in Missability and she was just Lovely, amazing. yeah. I would say we interviewed a lot of lovely people, yeah. but it's, it, it's stand out for me. Yeah. Of being just yeah. the most lovely yeah. person. Absolutely lovely. But this one, like I say, I bought, gosh, I don't even know, it might be a couple of years ago. And it's her smooth sock, so it's the sort of standard 75-25. So it's the wool balm. And the colourway is beach coma. And it's got all of these little specks of like a silvery blue and a bit of greenish, more, more sort of blue, a tiny bit of grey. It's just really, really beautiful. And the speckle distribution, that should be like, you should have like categories, shouldn't you, for speckle yeah. yarns? And that should be one of them. What's the speckled distribution like? And it's just fantastic. I'm almost finished with the body of this and to the decreases. But you can see it's got this folded brim, which is the bottom bit here. And if I turn it up, you can see really neat attachment of the brim on the inside. 
and that's done as you work. And the idea behind this is that I just wanted to have a hat that was kind of like a go-to pattern for those times when I just wanted to knit and I didn't really want to have to think too much. So perfect for bedtime knitting for me because I'm just going round and round. Perfect for things like holiday knitting, do you know when you just want that relaxed knit that's small so in the summer that would be great and also for those special skeins or half skein because I think my first hat only just used just over 50 grams of a bit of a 100 gram ball and I've, I've honestly literally worn that hat every single day now some people said because normally I say normally but sometimes what, what is done is when you have a folder brim like this, where it folds here, you do a pearl round so that it gives a natural fold. And it means that it sort of sits flatter to your head because some people, what, what sort of the opinion is that it can sort of flare out this. Now, I would say from having worn that hat now a lot, don't, I wouldn't describe it as flaring out, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't like grip your head like a rib would because there isn't a rib there. You do get kind of a little bit, you, you're a bit more aware of sort of air going up the edges. But because I knit my hats long enough to cover my ears, I haven't found it to be a problem at all. And I just really love the simple look of it. So... I'm continuing with my kind of experiment of this and I know a lot of people after I showed it before said oh would you put a pattern out and I really wanted to trial it quite well and I wanted to be happy in myself that I enjoyed the wearing of it and that the fact that I didn't put a turning row on the brim here that that wouldn't affect anything now of course you can always do that there's nothing to stop you doing a like a pearl round here. Absolutely nothing. But the point of this hat for me is that it's just pure knitting. You've got some decreases at the top, obviously, but there's no pearls. For me, it works. I'm going to shorten it just slightly because the one I've been wearing, I think he's just just a tad too long. You know, there's just maybe a little bit too much slouch. So I'm going to take off maybe three rounds, something like that. And then I'm going to wear this one and see how I feel again. But in, you know, in terms of, oh, the other thing I was going to do actually was, I was talking to Dan when we were out walking the other day, is I would really like a fingering weight hat that is knit to a really tight gauge. So, do you know, it stops the wind a bit more. So I might knit this again, probably to the same stitch count but I think I'll go down a needle size and just see what that's like so I'm still in the sort of knitting and experimenting stage of this but I think ultimately I'm, I may well put out a pattern for this because I think it's just such a versatile thing and like I said just a perfect thing for when there's those times when all you want to do is just zone out and just knit so yeah, that's my white, if you like, tin roof hat. Very much enjoying it and should be finished fairly soon. And this is my winter at Pembley cow, which won't Goodness. be finished fairly soon. No, but that's okay. This is a design that Kate did for me for my birthday. Birthday, yeah, yes, in yes. October. I know, I know. And it's been wonderful. I've been enjoying knitting this so much. Yeah. It's like all the great, all the best things from the sweetheart cow and... Hadrian's cow. Yeah. It's like all of that, but like blended into an even more sort of epic mix of like tricky floats and all the things that I love with regards to colourwork knitting. And you know, when you combine, I'm just thinking back when I was knitting the Sweetheart cow and probably the Hadrian's one to an extent, definitely the Sweetheart cow. I was also doing a let lopey jumper at the same time. And mm. combining the two is really good because it's really working out your technique and it's mm. really helping mm. Mm. really nail it. But yes. This is my winter at Pemberley, and I'm loving it. The is yarn it is perfect. A cowl. It's the merino yak, isn't it? Reggie and merino yak in the yeah in this sort of silvery colour, and then a green. Definitely my go-to. Isn't it lovely when you're knitting colour work like this? It's just tremendous. Oh, it's so nice. And yeah, this first motif actually, I can tell you now the inspiration for this first motif. Can you see its like little crosses? 
This represents the fact that in the TV series, Lizzie Bennet pretty much always, you know, or very often, you see her wearing just a tiny little gold cross around her neck. So that's what that is inspired by. And Dan's just started this next section. And what's the inspiration for this? This is, I think this is an ivy. Yes, yes. I think it's inspired by the garden. Yes, I remember. Yeah, so you'll see it more as that develops, but it's like half an ivy leaf (laughs) currently. Amazing. But the colours just look lovely, don't they? I think they contrast so nicely. One of my biggest bonuses about being a knitter in this house is living in a house with someone who is stupendous at choosing yarn colours for projects. Wow. I tried, was rubbish, and what's the point in trying to do something you're not very good at? Yes, winter at Pemberley, loving every minute and really looking forward to getting this finished and seeing you wearing it because then I it'll know. just be like, oh. and we're watching Prime and Prejudice again. We've just started re-watching it again. So In fact, there never should be a moment where you're not watching it. I, I think, think we started on New Year's Day, didn't we? Oh, it just felt so nice. You know, New Year's Day, watch something lovely. Should we do it once a quarter, do you think? <laughs> it depends how long it takes us to get enough? through it, I suppose. That might not be enough. I think it probably would be enough, four times Not a year. For me. What else is on your needle? So the final thing I've got to show you, well, I will show you something else actually, after you've watched the thing, but anyway. Um, Brilliant presenting, okay? That was dreadful, that was dreadful, dreadful. <laughs> so the final thing I've got to show you I will show you, you something is... else after you've watched the thing. <laughs> oh, who's that on the phone? It's the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Not... Um, yeah, I've got another pair of socks to show you. And I started this pair of socks last time. But I finished a whole sock and I'm almost through the heel flap of the second one. These are interesting, so let me show you and then you'll... You might recognise this sock. Now, Bryony, when I showed her this sock, she just went, what's up with that sock? <laughs> you got to love kids, haven't you? I said, look... They ruin you in, like, a look, sentence. there is reason behind my madness of this sock and as I explained last time if you didn't see it what I'm doing is I'm combining a little bit of leftovers of this yarn which is Yule Ball from London House Yarns with this lovely pink because I just had a tiny bit of this left over and I wanted to use it and I wanted to be able to see it in a pair of socks so I thought if I just put that this is like a full repeat of the stripes So if I just put that on the foot when I'm wearing them, I'll be able to see it. But the pink yarn, this is another really interesting yarn. This is from Eden Cottage and it's her Milburn four ply. And this colorway is Azalea. And this yarn is, it's a fingering weight and it's an 8515. It's 85 blue face Leicester, 15% silk. It comes in 50 gram balls and you get 200 metres per 50 grams. So perfect yardage and thickness for sock weight, I would say. So that's what made me want to try it really for socks. And I'm really enjoying knitting with the yarn. Now this sock hasn't been blocked and I deliberately left it unblocked because it, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't produce the neatest looking fabric. Now, I've started the second sock, and to be fair, I think the second sock might be a bit neater. So it could be that it was my frame of mind, because I've been knitting these through the sort of back end of December. And this one, I've been knitting more recently. So yeah, this one, I think he's also a little bit untidy. And that's not like me in terms of when I'm sock knitting, you know, my fabric generally is really, really consistent. And that just comes from practice, I'll be honest. But with this yarn, it it looks a little bit untidy. Now, I do think when I block these socks, I think it will even out. And I'm really looking forward to blocking them because I do think that will sort of transform them. In terms of the experience of knitting with this yarn, I'm really enjoying it. And I think it's quite funky to have the stripes. Aren't the colours in this striping yarn just lovely? I don't know what it is about these colours, but I just think, you know, they're so lovely. I love them. So yeah, I'm on to sock number two. I'm just nearly through the heel flap. I'm using 
Nitpix Sunstruck double points for these. And that's my favourite double pointed needles by far, I would say. And I'm really, really enjoying knitting them. So very You've soon. You've been wearing a lot have. more socks recently. I have. I have been wearing a lot more socks recently. But I've been really enjoying wearing hand knitted socks. And I, I like short socks. And these are 24, it's only a 24 round leg. So there's 12 rounds cuff, 24 round leg. And I like the proportion of that because the leg is twice the cuff. So I like the sort of maths of that if you like but yeah i've just really been enjoying wearing socks at night time mainly and first thing in the morning noticed in my pajamas and yeah i don't i don't know why i've suddenly started wearing socks more but is it still with the short legs or sure it's yeah. the short legs i think that's done it because i yeah i do ha i mean i had so many pairs of socks but they did all have a, a longer leg you know 50 60 rounds i don't know why you know everybody likes a different length of leg don't they but this just suits me i like the the unfussiness of it you know I, I like that nothing bunches and and stuff like that so yeah i'm looking forward to trying these out for wear wearability with this yarn i think it'll be interesting i'm definitely um, a long leg winter person short leg summer yeah, and the ones that I'm knitting you that I've just showed you, I've, I've done like an in-between length. I think I've done like 45 rounds because it might be sort of spring when you get them. So it's that in-between yeah, yeah. time. Cool. Um, but this yarn, you know, this is... I'm only going to be... will have used a 50 gram skein. This is sort of what's left and I have plenty, plenty to do. And I've still even got a teeny bit of the London House yarns left from my half look. So this is the other half. So this was like just short of 20 grams that I had left. So I've probably, for that run of stripes running through here, I bet I've only used, oh, I don't know, maybe six, seven grams, something like that. It's not very much. But yeah, really, really enjoying them and should have a finished pair of socks quite soon. How soon's quite soon, do you think? I don't know, maybe for next time. Wow, well, that'd be exciting. Yeah, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? Wonderful. Right, it's time for a brand new yarn dyeing odyssey yes. with Kate. Over six episodes, join her as she welcomes you to the Yarning Book Club. In each episode, you'll dye up a skein of yarn inspired by one of her yes. favourite books. And my goodness, it's just was the most wonderful fun thing to film ever mm. i think that we've done we've used a lot of different filming techniques that we tried out in case handmade christmas yeah. it's all very exciting but the question certainly on my lips and i'm guessing on yours is what book has she chosen for the very first episode let's find out as we watch episode one of the yarny book club I love reading books and adore dyeing yarn, so I thought in this series it would be wonderful to combine them. So, over the next six episodes, join me as I share with you some of my favourite books and we create colourways inspired by them. Along the way, I hope you find some inspiration for some great reads and we also discover some fantastic new colourways. Welcome to the Yarny Book Club. So here we are, everybody. I'm so excited for this new series. So in this series of the Yarny Book Club, we are going to be dyeing up yarns that are influenced or inspired or reflected by six books. So there's going to be six episodes in this series. So we're starting off with the very first episode, with a book that I read about a year ago, actually. And that book is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I read this book last 
January, February time, so probably exactly a year ago, and I absolutely loved it. It was the first Agatha Christie that I've I have ever read Amazingly, which is crazy because I love Agatha Christie. I've seen loads of films, you know, I've watched tons of Poirot, but I never read a book. Isn't that the way? So yeah, I read this last January, February and absolutely loved it. It's a real page turner. I didn't really know what to expect with Agatha Christie, to be honest, in terms of how easy it was to read. And I found it very, very readable. I will talk a bit more about this book a little bit later on, but I just really wanted to introduce it as today's book that we're going to be dyeing some yarn inspired by. It's set on an island off the coast of Devon, I believe it is, and this group of people are gathered there sort of mysteriously and then they all just start dying. <laughs> <laughs> one by one. It's set in the summer in August but there's this raging storm going on they all get sort of stranded on this island and they can't get off. That is where I've taken my inspiration the fact that it's set on an island and it's set in the summer is my first point of inspiration but then I've brought in colours to represent the darker side of the book. So we've got both sort of sides going on there. So that's just briefly the main colourway that we're going to dye today. Now today's a little bit different to the episodes that will follow because today I'm also going to be dyeing up a complementary colour that I'm going to be using all the way through the project I'm going to be knitting that you will see later. So today we need to dye that one up as well. So that one I will explain as I'm dyeing it, I will tell you where that sort of came from and then the name that I gave it. So yeah, two colourways we're going to be dyeing up today and then there were none is the book inspiration. So what we need to do now of course is have a look at everything that we're going to need and what you're going to see now is all of the things that I will use every single time I dye the yarn up. Here is everything that I'm going to need every time I dye up some yarn. So I'll start from kind of this side and work over this way. So first of all over here I've got my pans that I dye in, my pots. I always dye in pots, I don't dye in those flat sort of tray things. I always dye in the pots and these are stainless steel pots and it's sort of like a casserole pot. I like the ones that have got two handles because they're nice and easy to lift around. All of your equipment that you use for dyeing your yarn you should only use for dyeing yarn. So pack it in a box, keep it somewhere separate and that's your dyeing equipment. So yeah we've got our two pots, we've got our mordant which for me is citric acid because it's a dried product, it's actually a food product, it's what makes sweets that sort of fizzy, sour fizziness. So it's really easy to store, it's really nice and cheap to buy. I think this, this big tub was like £10 or something from Amazon. I've got a little plastic measuring cup because sometimes we will need that. And then here I've got some paintbrushes and I've got my measuring spoon. So the paintbrushes are for speckling. And the measuring spoon is when we are either measuring dye directly into the water or sometimes I also sprinkle the dye on with this. And this is a 1 8 of a teaspoon measure. We've got my mask, of course. Always wear a mask when we are dyeing yarn. I've got a little bowl here. This is a little Pyrex ramekin dish that I stole from <laughs> the ones in my cupboard. And I use this for when I'm mixing my own dye colours. So when I'm combining colours, I use that to mix the dye powders. I've got my design book with all my notes in, of course. My big mixing spoon, couldn't I? I couldn't do my dyeing without my big mixing spoon. I've got some old tea towels. I've got a piece of oil cloth here. And these are just to protect the work surface because I'm dyeing in the kitchen. And then I've got two pairs of gloves. I've got a heavy duty pair for when the water's hot. And then I've just got one of these sort of surgical pairs, I suppose they are, because I don't like wearing thick, heavy gloves most of the time. So these are really great. 
Okay, so now I'm going to just talk about the things that are specific to this colourway that I'm going to be using. So the yarn I've got here soaking in my bowl. So in the bowl I've got two skeins of fingering weight yarn. This yarn is the same yarn I was using actually all through last year when I did the My Favourite Blanket series and it's an 8515 superwash merino and nylon. 400 meters per 100 grams. Now I do usually dye on fingering weight to be fair because that's just what I use most often. You can dye whatever yarn you want to dye, you know. In, in this instance I am going to be knitting these yarns into a project which is a fingering weight project but of course you don't have to do that. You know if you want to dye a different weight of yarn and knit something completely different then of course you can do that. But I've got two skeins of fingering weight yarn here and this has been soaking for a little while in just some warm tap water with a scoop of citric acid and my scoops that are in there are about a tablespoon I would say. And then we've got the dyes. Now this one uses quite a a lot of dye colours because I'm doing something that I'm not even sure that I've shown before so that's going to be fun but it does involve eight different dye colours so in Jacquard I've got number 635 that's brown I've got 613 purple and then Dharma dye I've got 482 delphinium blue now I'm not sure you can get this colour anymore the colour is it's a, a really pretty blue but there's a lot of pink in the blue because when you actually use this it does sometimes break and the specks of pink. So it's a blue that has quite a lot of pink in it. So, you know, use a different dye colour that sort of reflects that if you can't get the delphinium blue. And then the rest are all landscape dyes. So we've got Shell which is, as it sounds, it's that kind of just pale shell colour, quite a neutral. We've then got Kurawong, which is a black. We've got Apollo Bay. Now this one is blue, as the name would, would probably hint at, and it, it's like that sort of quite deep sea blue. It's really, really pretty. It does, maybe it leans a tiny bit, sort of slightly greenish but a really pretty sort of deep blue. I've then got alfalfa, which is a lovely green. It's like a sort of pale, um, sort of mossy green, I suppose. I'm using it in this instance as my kind of seaweedy inspiration. And then finally, we've got mist, which is a lovely silvery gray. So that's our dyes and our yarn. So we're all ready now to start dyeing the first colorway. So the first one I'm going to do is actually the complementary skein. So it's like a neutral. Okay, so I've now got on my stove heating up nicely, about half full of water, and I've got another scoop of citric acid in there. So into the pot, we, we are going to dye up the first colour, which is this sort of complementary colour, the neutral, that's going to run through the entire project I'm going to be knitting. When I dyed it up, the first thing that came into my head was Miss Havisham's wedding dress. <laughs> Do you know from Great Expectations? And it's that kind of, it used to be white, but it's not white anymore, and it's got a few mottled marks on it. It was that sort of look. So I have called this colourway Miss Havisham. So into my pot, I'm going to drop in a little bit of dye in three different colours. I've got mist, I've got shell, and I've got brown. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of each because this colourway is subtle. We don't want to overdo this. We can always add a bit more dye, but I'm really just going to start with a little bit. So it's probably not even half a teaspoon of each of the colours. And we'll just assess it when I've got them all in. So just a little bit of each. And it kind of looks like nothing in the pot right now. But when we have the brown, the brown is quite strong colour, so I'm going to go steady with that. It was just really not even a quarter of a teaspoon. Oh, it's so pretty. So go in there with your big mixing spoon, give it a good mix. And it produces this sort of, I suppose it just looks like a slightly brown colour. But the addition of the shell and the silver grey, I think really just gives it an extra bit of dimension. I think what I'm going to do, the bro there's enough brown in there, I'm just going to add a little touch more of the mist and the shell. 
So overall, I would say I probably used about half a teaspoon of the mist and the shell and just sort of like the tip of the spoon of the brown. So now we're gonna get the yarn in and just have a look what it looks like. So make sure that that's fully, fully dissolved. Right, so I'm gonna get my skein of yarn in. I'm just doing one skein. So squidge it out. And this is a tonal, so I want to get it in the pots fairly rapidly really, because there's not a lot of dye in there and it's gonna just suck up really quick. So we're just gonna drop it in. I'm just having a look at the color, okay. I'm just going to get it in quite quickly, moving the skein around like that. And then when it's all in, pick it up and then I'm going to move it sort of quite rapidly and just drop it back down just so that that top section gets a good bit of dye as well. And then that dye will just disappear in seconds because there was barely any in there. And I think looking at this colour, we will add a bit more. I'm just gonna lift it up and drop in some more dye. It might seem a bit faffy doing it this way, but if we'd have put too much in, we can't take it away, you know, and that's that. So it's better to go gentle. So I'm gonna just get my dye ready. I'm gonna do about the same again, but maybe not as much brown. So I'm gonna drop in maybe half of the mist. A touch more maybe. There's a lot of blue in that mist color. And then the shell. And then just the teeniest bit of brown. I'm gonna try that. I can always add a bit more brown. Give that a stir and before my arm drops off, I'm gonna drop it back in. There we go. That looks better. So we've just got this really subtle. This is why I thought of Miss Havisham because it just looks like aged, you know, like old silk that's just been hanging around for ages. So let's have a see of that now. So now we've just got this very subtle colour and that I think is about right. It looks good. So it's just a really soft like, it's hard to describe. I think because when you mix the colour yourself, it can be quite hard to describe the colour that you achieve because we, we've got elements of that silveriness going on and then also the brown is giving it that creamy, creaminess. So what I'm going to do now is turn the heat up because I want that to come to the simmering point and we are going to do some speckling now but to do that I'm going to remove some of the water but first of all I want to bring it up to temperature just to make sure we've fully set that sort of tonal colour so just give it a few minutes and as soon as you see it start to bubble that's fine and I'll just knock the temperature back down to, to low If I was to speckle in this, it wouldn't speckle because there's far too much water. So I'm just gonna go in with my little scoopy, scoopy scoop thing. Let's just move it all around and get as much yarn on the surface as we can. Turn the heat down now. Let's have a look at that. Okay, that looks good. So what we want is lots of, of yarn to be out of the water, but there's still enough water in there to set it. Okay, so that looks perfect. And can you see the beautiful tones now? I don't know if you can on camera, but we've got a darker section here and this is a bit paler. And this looks sort of a bit more grey than this. And that's because we mixed our own dye colour. Now, you've got to be light of hand. Okay, breathe deep, everybody. Because, <laughs> because we are really going to do teeny, teeny speckles. And it's so beautiful. This finished skein is so gorgeous. She says, fingers crossed, 
that water now is bubbling. I'm going to turn off my heat because I don't want anything disturbing my tiny speckles. So we're using the brown, the jacquard brown, and we're using a paintbrush and we're putting some on the paintbrush and then tapping it off because I just want the smallest amount on there, okay? I'm going to hold this over here. So go low to the yarn and just a little tap. Can you see we've dropped a tiny bit on there? Move. Teeny bit. And this is what we're going to do. Just move around the skein doing these teeny tiny speckles, okay? And when it feels like you've not got any dye powder left on your brush, just go back in and get a bit more but tap it off. Just teeny. And this with the Miss Havisham thing, it's like it's, it, you know, where you get those age marks on fabric. That's what we're aiming for. So just go all the way over it, teeny tiny specks. You get the idea now. That's good. Okay. I'm just going to put my heat back on. I just want those speckles to set. It won't take very long actually because that yarn was hot and the speckles are teeny. Right, so that's just had a few minutes. I'm just going to turn the heat off again actually. And to check, just to make sure that your speckles have set, just get your big spoon and just find some speckles and just push gently. And you can see that, well you might not be able to, but I can see there's no movement in those specks. They're nice and set. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to move the skein because we want some speckles on the other side as well. So, because if you look here now, there's hardly anything. Can you see that? And then this side has got lots of lovely specks. So just turn it over and you can move it if you want to. I find actually that because we're only using one skein, you can just rearrange it in your pot really well to make sure we get some good coverage. And you can see there we've barely got any speckles on this side, so this is going to be perfect. And I'm just going to repeat what I just did. So just tiny, tiny speckles over the surface and then this colourway will be done. So after I've put those tiny specks on, I'm going to just raise the temperature, let it set for maybe five minutes or so and then I will pop it outside to cool down. colourway. So in my pot here I've got water heating up, it's about a third full and I've got another scoop of citric acid in there. So I'm going to get my yarn into the pot first of all. Okay so yarn is going in. So again just move it all around so we've got a good surface area. Now this time we're doing a different technique and we do want a bit of water in there. So now what we need to do is mix up our dye colour. So I've got four shades here. I've got mist, I've got alfalfa, I've got delphinium blue, and I've got Apollo Bay. And I've got my little pot. So I'm going to start off with the mist, and I'm going to pop in two of my teaspoon, so it's one eighth of a teaspoon. So whenever I say teaspoon, it's one eighth of a teaspoon. So one, two, and now it's alfalfa, and the same of alfalfa. One, two. Now I've got the delphinium blue, which is the Dharma dye. Now this one, I'm only going to use half of my eighth of a teaspoon. So just half. And then finally the Apollo Bay, and we're going to use a full eighth of a teaspoon of that. Okay, so lids back on everything. And now I'm just going to give it a little mix like a magician. And we're just creating our own shade. 
my thought process with this colourway was I wanted to put in there colours that make me think of that kind of coastal summery sort of look. So we've got the silvery grey, because sometimes sunlight when it's very bright at the seaside it can have that silvery look. We've got alfalfa which makes me think of seaweed. We've got delphinium blue and Apollo Bay and they're the two blues that I've used to reflect the sea and the sky. And that's our mix all ready to start dyeing the yarn. So here we go, I've got my mixed up dye colour here and what we're going to do for this colourway is we're going to, it's not, I mean it does actually come out looking like a speckled colourway, it's just not as delicate of a speckle as the one that we've just done. So I'm going to use my teaspoon for this. So here we are with the dye mix. It's always exciting when you mix up your own dye. So I'm going to sprinkle it over in this sort of ribbon of colour like this and then find another bit and do another ribbon across and then round maybe a bit round here and just let that go a bit up there and then maybe a just random bit over there. So we've sprinkled that on and now take your spoon and just give it a little push because we do want to sort of bleed that yarn, uh, the dye into the yarn. And you'll notice, like here, and this is the delphinium blue that's making it do this. It breaks and you get some of that pink. Look, can you see that? I absolutely love it when it does that. So we may get some random pink specks in here as well, which, is, you know, I'm never going to complain about that. So you can see now we've got some nice ribbons of that colour and you can see it is this sort of inky sea blue but it's going gonna, it's gonna to bleed through the rest of the skein to give it a, a, a sort of general hue of blue. <laughs> it's difficult to say. But then when we get more pink in the mix it turns a bit more purpley which is just lovely. So we can move this now straight away because we don't mind if some of that blue goes through the rest of the skein, we want that. It's so, you know, it's nice and hot in there. It really sets quite quickly. And like I said, we don't mind if it moves around a bit. So I'm going to move the skein. I'm going to put on my big gloves. So I'm just going to pick it up. Just move it a little bit. And then flop it back down. And I'm going to repeat the process. Now with this, this particular colourway, I found I needed to do this four times in total. So this is number two. I'm going to do this for number two and then I'm going to do that two more times afterwards. So altogether we will have used four scoops. And do you know what I didn't do? I didn't dry my spoon before I put it back in. but. I will, I'll go with it. You should dry your spoon before you take another scoop, but let's just do it. So same thing, a nice arc of dye around, choose another area, go back over a bit you've already done, and a bit over there, and you can see I've got dye stuck to my spoon. Doesn't matter because I'm going to push anyway. So go back in and just gently push these areas. So we're going to get some quite intense blue but then we're also going to get this beautiful overall blue to the skein. So that's the second time there. So I'm now just going to do that twice more. Right, so that's had four layers of dye. <laughs> Whilst that's just setting nicely, I'm actually gonna mix up another color because we're gonna have add some kind of low lights to it now. So what I've got now here is two dye colors that I'm gonna mix together again to produce a really dark shade. So I've got Kurawong and I've got purple. 
and by mixing these two we get a dark shade but it's not that harsh black because my idea behind this is that I'm adding in now the dark elements to the story so we've got our beautiful you know oh we've set it up and it's just gorgeous and it's on this island and it's summer and it's blue sea and it's beautiful and now oh no we're bringing in some darkness because everybody starts getting bumped off so I'm going to mix together an eighth of a teaspoon of the Kurawong which is the black and then half of my teaspoon of purple and I find this is a really good mix. It just gives a nice dark color without it being that really harsh black. And the purple really tones well with the blue, I find, um, because we have got a bit of purple tones coming through in some areas because of the pink that was in that delphinium blue. So it all works together really well. So as of before, I'm just giving this a good old mix. And what I'm going to do now the same thing I did before, but I'm only going to do little tiny ribbons because I don't want this overpowering it. We just want little low lights of that darkness, okay? So I'm just going to put a bit on my spoon. So just little ribbons of darkness coming through. Like that, see? And choose another area for a little ribbon. Over here, maybe. And maybe just a bit over there. Don't need all that. And then same thing, go in and just push gently, gently, gently. Because we don't want this going everywhere in the skein. Now leave it. Don't mess with it any more than that. So just leave it be. Let that set. And then we are going to then just turn the skein and do that just once more because we just want these little areas of darkness shooting through. So just leave that for sort of five minutes or so and just let that set. Okay, so that's nicely set now. And again, the way to check it, get your big spoon and just find an area and just go in and just give it a tap. And can you see that's not moving? So we know that's good. So I'm just going to move the skein one final time. I'm going to do that again with that dark colour and then we will be done. So let's have a look at it as we lift it out now. Can you see we've got this beautiful blue but then we've got these dark areas. So this is the dark side of the story coming in. So I'm just going to move that slightly, drop it back in and try and get areas that don't have any of that purplish blackish colour. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. So just look at your skein and decide where you're going to put those dark highlights, low lights it would be, wouldn't it, effectively. I'm going to put a bit there, a bit over here, a bit over here, a little touch there, maybe just a tiny touch there. And then again, same thing, just gentle, gentle tapping, don't go nuts, pushing this down. We do not want it to spread very far. There we go. So now just make sure you bring it up to that sort of simmering temperature again. Let it be for sort of five minutes or so. And then we can turn off the heat and pop it outside to cool down with Miss Havisham. So that's our two beautiful colourways all dyed up and cooling down outside. Very exciting. So come back in part two when we are going to get the yarn rinsed, we're going to get it dried, we're going to skein it up and we are going to start knitting a fantastically exciting new project. So I will see you back soon. What a start! Oh my goodness! Whole new views and all sorts. Oh yes, you may have seen dyeing shows from K before, but none quite like this. It's exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting, and I love the sort of idea behind it. I just love, you know, seeing yeah. you take the sort of things that you love about mm. a book and mm. then put it into, you know, a really great colour. And it looks so great outside cooling. Yes.
And I have knit it, and you will see that. After That's coming up in part two. I yes. can't wait for that. Yes. It's going to be so great because you're going to be doing your book review in part two. Yeah. And you're also then going to be sitting down and you're going to be knitting. Yes. And starting off the project. And I'm going to tell you what I'm doing so you can also do the same thing if you want, you want to. Don't have to if you want to. Perfect. Yeah. That's all to come later on in the show. Right now, though, it's time for probably the biggest that I can recall in some time. Quite a lot, yeah. And I'll ask you first. Okay. And then you can ask me, not once, but twice. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Kate Jones, what's off your needles? So, yes, many things. So the first thing that's off my needles are Bryony's red, white and blue fingerless mitts. Look at them. Red, white and royal blue, I have to say, of course, don't I? Because these fingerless mitts were inspired by the book and Bryony is obsessed with the book and the film. Is it a series or it's a film, isn't it? The film. She read the book first and then went and watched the film and she loves them both. So yeah, I finished these before Christmas, I think probably a week before, because I wanted her to have them so she could wear them in her last week of school, which she did. So she's been wearing them now and they're looking a little bit worse for wear. So you're seeing, or you did see some beautiful photos there where they were freshly finished. Wonderful. So that's very exciting. Cool. So Dan Jones. Yes. What's off you? Your needles. How exciting. Well, these are my whispers in the wall socks. Yes. And don't they look stupendous? Yes, they do. These were a Christmas gift for my wonderful wife, Kay. Yeah. And these were just a joy to knit. And I, I love, I, I'm so looking forward to casting on the, the Sherwood socks. I, I want that yarn. Did you give me that leftover yarn? This way of knitting socks really works for me, where something intricate-ish across the first two needles, because I use DPNs, and then something not boring, but slightly different mm, mm. across the back two needles. Mm, and yeah. I also think it produces such a great looking sock too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Whispers in the Wall socks, perfect colourway from Kay. Thank you so much. Yes, that was, oh, after all this yes, time, it was it. a Snape inspired colourway, Harry Potter. Gorgeous. Yeah. And I really, really enjoy knitting with yarn like this, mm. where it's like different colours are like popping out. And, yeah, yeah. But then also, it's not like crazy. I mean, I, I, no, it's you know, it's a dark colourway, but then you just get those little hints of the bright pink and the blue and the yeah, gold. I think yeah. it's when it's something that looks like something, but actually, when you look a bit yeah. deeper, it's yeah. like, oh, that's even more. So, whispers in the wall yeah. socks, anyway, all finished. Absolutely love knitting them, and I'm looking forward to casting on my next socks. Kate Jones, what else is off your needles? I, I just forgot what else was off my needles for a second. I had to get a prompt. <laughs> um, so line that's what they say isn't it, when they're on stage line oh do they yes oh I don't I don't do well with lines Dan knows to his you know downfall that I'm not very good with script it's not my downfall no you know what I mean I'm just not very good with script I just have to say stuff anyway and you do and I do it's, a lot. It's, it's always and humorous. Often. It's always humorous. Put Kay in a room with people she doesn't know too well. Oh, don't and do And it's, that. it's no, amazing don't do that. some of the don't things that. that you hear coming out of her mouth. I can't. I can't be left alone with people. No, no, it's a bad idea. Because I... She'll start saying things that you're like, what are you saying? What am I talking about? Stop it now. It's, it, the nerves. I just get that um, social nerve, Turn nervousness. Turn the voice And off. I just start saying things that I shouldn't be telling people, you know? I'm just not good. No, Dan has to be there to, yeah. Well, do you know what? I got really well schooled when I was young about how best to interact with people. Mm. And it was my dad who taught me. And uh, I remember we would like run into people when we were like walking around town in York where I grew up. And it was really weird because we'd be in town just doing a bit of shopping. But then when we'd meet someone, we'd suddenly be on our way somewhere. And we come away and I'm like, oh, I didn't realise that was happening. He goes, no, 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 we're not going anywhere. And after the second or third time, I said, what exactly are you doing there? He said, well, I was taught this by my dad, he said. That's my granddad. Yeah. Whenever you see anyone in town, right. always be on the way somewhere so you can't stop too long. <laughs> Ask them how they are 
Right. Ask them what yes. they've been up to. Yes. And then yes. say, oh, time's short. I must yes. be on my way. Yeah. And that way then... The that person, should be my mantra. Yeah. The person who you've spoken to comes away thinking, oh, my goodness, how nice were they? All they did was ask me about them. I didn't yeah. even get a chance yeah. to ask them how yeah. they were. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely interaction. That's what I should do always. Well, that's always what I try and do whenever yeah. I run into anyone. Yeah. And I even get nervous around people that I know really well if I'm left alone with them. It's yeah. really, really bizarre and stupid. Stupid. And I end up like in situations, you know, I'll, I'll be sat there talking to somebody that's like a really good friend and I'll really like love this friend. But then I'll just start shaking and just being like nervous and like it's ridiculous. It's all ridiculous anyway. Not around me though. No, no, I'm not nervous around Dan. So I can be alone with Dan and I'm not nervous. So that's good. Isn't Lucky it? me. <laughs> what else is off your needles? So these socks are. The Nutcracker socks. And these were the advent design, the mystery advent design that ran all the way through our advent calendar this year. Amazing. So these socks were inspired by the Nutcracker book and ballet. And we've got alternate sections of like patterning interspersed with these lovely striped sections and the stripes represent the kind of military look of because he's a soldier isn't he the nutcracker's a soldier so it's that military element and there's quite a lot of military elements to the story as well you know there's the battle scene in in the ballet as well isn't there where there's all that fight going on so this yeah the stripes rec- re- represent that sort of military side of the story And then each of the pattern sections represent another part of the ballet or the book. So like up here, we've got the Christmas trees. So, you know, right at the very beginning, there's the scene where they gather around the Christmas tree. And when you watch the ballet, there's always a beautiful Christmas tree front and centre. This crisscrossy section here represents the battle going on and the crossed swords. This one here is Waltz of the Flowers. So within the ballet, there's this um, whole sort of segment, isn't there, where there's like lots of dancing going on and um, they're all kind of, it's like a big celebration that's going on. So this is Waltz of the Flowers. And then this final one is, of course, the Sugar Plum Fairy. And it's this little textured stitch to represent the tutu on the fairy. So yeah, these socks were incredibly popular through the advent calendar. There's been so many people knit these socks up and completed the pair within December, which has just been absolutely brilliant. So many colour combinations. Lots of people followed my colours, which was lovely. This is all Malabrigo Ultimate Sock. It's Ravelry Red. Patrick is the green and Frank Ochre. Frank Ochre is the gold. So yeah, they're all finished now. And I, I mean, I, I'm going to see if Bryony wants them. They've got an, a, a long leg. So she might want these for boots. I think they'll be really cool in boots. So they're all finished. Wonderfully undersold. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm these, not very, I'm ladies not, and gentlemen, I'm not very good are the first that. platinum pattern of 2024. Yes. Through this year, Kay will release four exclusive patterns, which are only available to our Baker Bear patrons, and it's only a select group of patrons. It's the gold and platinum patrons who get access to the platinum patterns in the year of their release. And the past platinum patterns, and there's lots of them, are accessible just by our platinum patrons, hence the reason why they're called the platinum uh, collection. Yes. But here's a tip-off for you. If you sign up to be a patron right now, and I mean right now, any level of patronage, you will get those socks for free. Yeah. Because on the 9th of January, they will only be available to gold and platinum patrons. But as our special Christmas gift, we make them available for a short period of time for everyone who's a patron. And there couldn't be a better time to do this because on the 19th, the next show that we broadcast, we will be, for a limited run, putting out Kay's My Favourite Blanket Pattern, but a special edition yeah. A complete My Favourite Blanket Pattern, which was, of course, the series which we produced last mm-hmm. year. Lots of amazing pictures, lots of links to all the shows, lots of other lovely bits and pieces. Only going to be available from the 19th until the 31st of January. Yes. It's a limited time Baker Bear patron offer, and it's brilliant because it's free. 
Absolutely. If you're a patron, so sign up right now before the 9th of January. Yeah. Get these socks yeah. for nothing. And then make sure you stay a patron until we release the My Favourite Blanket pattern. Boom, you're off. Yeah. But then you may stay a patron a bit longer because the patron-only podcast... Yes. Goes live. I can't remember exactly. Oh, I can. It's the twenty eighth of January. Twenty eighth. Excellent. Twenty eighth of January. It's our first live show of the year, and that's we, we do that every uh, month. A live show every month, and that's our first one of the year, and it's always an absolute call. Yes, and we'll be launching Valenvent. Yeah. Oh no. We'll not be... launching. We'll be talking about Valenvent. Yes. Valenvent's not... our next Valen... big yes. patron. Yes. It'll list. be starting very shortly after that because yes. it starts. Valenvent is a is seasonal event that runs from the 1st to the 14th of oh my goodness. February. I forgot. I've designed something for that event and, you know, we will all be knitting along together. And, and there's it, videos. There's videos. There will be videos for it this time. I think there's three or four videos. We should call tutorials. it Christmas Two. It's kind of like that, yeah. And I've designed... I always design something for Valenvent that is... It's, absolutely possible to knit it within that amount of time you know it's not taxing it's not a huge amount of time every day to knit it so it's perfectly possible to have the finished thing for valentine's day wonderful yeah so that's all coming ask me the question so dan jones do you have one more thing off your needles i most certainly do yes and it's these gorgeous socks these are the cable and twist socks yes this was a gift for briny for christmas our daughter and she loves them which i'm just so thrilled about yeah one of my greatest thrills is her going to school with a pair of socks on that i've knitted i know it's lovely and it just it's like but to be fair i feel the same we probably all do don't we when Anyone wears anything that we've knitted them. Mm. For me, though, it's different. A hat is different, though, to a pair of socks. I don't know why socks feel more personal. Well, you've got them on all the time. A hat you, you just wear when you're yeah. outside in the cold. True. Socks you wear, like, all day, don't you? The pinnacle, though, is a jumper. Yeah. Seeing someone wear a jumper that you've knitted is like, oh. When you wear that Cascades by Michelle uh, Wong, I've not worn that for a while. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I should wear that again. My life yeah, is complete. Yeah. But, you, look, enough... Waffling about other projects. These were the cable and twist. I loved every second. Yeah. And yes, looking forward to my next sock cast on, yes. which I think I'll be sharing with you next time. Brilliant. What else is off your needles? Right. So the last thing we've got off our needles is I finished my advent project and I finished it on Christmas Eve. I maintained the knitting of it every single day through December. And let me tell you, that is no mean feat. I'm actually going to do a little video talking about this and talking about my experience of knitting through an advent calendar in its entirety. I used literally every scrap. I might have a tiny handful of the yarns left. So it's knitting it in its entirety every day through December. And it was quite an experience, but I did it. And then it's the scarf. Do you remember I've been knitting the scarf? So here it is all finished. It's really quite long, but not too long. Bryony tried it on and, well, I'll put it round, shall I? I mean, it's, it comes, as I'm sat here, it comes sort of halfway down my leg. But if you were to wrap it around, look, look how cosy it is. There we go. Oh, it matches my jumper too. Yeah, that was the end. So this is, this was Christmas Eve here. So this advent calendar was produced by Beaches and Birds Song and it was a Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe themed calendar. That was the little card that came with it. So it's 24 times 20 gram minis and each day, I've, I've kept them all in the book, each day you got a little description. So let's, is this one? Let's find 24, that was 23, here's 24. 24 was short and sweet, but 24 was once a king or queen of Narnia, always a king or queen of Narnia. The yarn was inside a little paper bag and this was inside the paper bag. So I didn't know until I opened it what it was going to be each day. And what she did was she worked through the book. So it went in in, in sort of um, story order through the book. It was brilliant absolutely brilliant and I cannot say enough good things about this advent calendar you know the whole experience of it and it was also not expensive at all advent calendar perfection 
for me. You know, every day was something different. It wasn't a fade or anything like that. I say I've got nothing against fades. They're just not my favourite. It's just a bit too predictable for me and not, not interesting enough. You know, to think, oh, I've, I've got this shade of pink and tomorrow's going to be a slightly different shade of pink. And do you know what I mean? It's just not my thing. Yeah, I just got a different different yarn every day. And, you know, I, I could read a bit of the book every day and I could find the actual paragraph in the book. And it, it just felt like such an immersive experience, the whole thing. And I fully appreciate the amount of time that it will have taken to produce all of these little bits of paper and putting them into each of the paper bags. There was also little treats along the way. I got a stitch marker that was a snowflake and a couple of other things as well. I think there's some sweets in one day and a couple of other bits. It was absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, I'm very... On one hand, I'm thrilled that I've got the scarf and it's beautiful and here it is and I'll always have it. On the other hand, I kind of still wish I had the yarn <laughs> because it was so lovely and I would have loved to have seen it all together, you know, but the whole experience was just fantastic. And you can see I interspersed each of the colours with just two rows of, this was also Eden Cottage Yarn, Milburn 4-ply, and this colourway was Black Tulip. And I did the fringe as well in the same colour, so it ties it all in beautifully. It was, a, it was the perfect, perfect Advent project. And I know some people, I'm sure, will say to me, are you going to release this as a pattern? I, I don't know at this stage. I haven't got any plans to, but I may do if enough people say to me, you know, I'd love to, to knit that. So if you want, if you're enthusiastic about it and you want me to, then do comment and I'll, I'll sort of have a ponder on that. But it, it was honestly a fantastic experience. The yarn was perfect. I loved the theme. The knitting was simple every day. I'm just knitting, knitting, knitting. And it probably took me maybe an hour or so each day to knit the section. And that might not sound like a lot, but when you've, you know, everybody knows what December's like and you've got a million things going on. So to commit to that every single day, it was quite a thing. But it also gave me a focus, you know. I knew that every day I had to do that. And I felt really accomplished when I got through it. So, brilliant. Cool. Okay. Speaking of brilliant projects, it's time to get back to the Yarny Book Club and to cast on a, a something truly wonderful. Yes, you're looking like we're not. I'm worried now. No. I've oh, good. This, I've done, well, I've not done it. But cool. I have it here so, in my bag. let's get back to the Yarny Book Club and find out all about the book and cast on a wonderful project. Yes. Welcome back, everybody, to part two of the Yarny Book Club. So in part one, we dyed up that beautiful yarn, both of those skeins. They are now cooling down outside. So it's time now for me to get snuggled up in my reading corner and just tell you a little bit more about the book that was the inspiration for today's colouring. So first of all, what I will say is this actual physical book that I got was a hardback copy and it was really lovely to read a hardback it's got really pretty end papers you can see here the stormy night with the house here on the island which is really cool and I really really enjoyed this book it's it's not if you've never read this book it isn't like a Poirot or a Miss Marple it's just a kind of standalone murder mystery and it involves um, ten, 10 people being invited to this island and they're all un seemingly unconnected and they're invited by this mystery person to this island for various different reasons and they so they all end up on this island together trying to figure out what's going on and you know wondering where their host was and the house there's two housekeepers they're a married couple, I seem, yeah, I'm sure they're a married couple. And right at the very beginning, the, you know, they arrive on the island and they're all sort of gathering together. And then this recording is played for them. And it's on like a, 
gramophone, but it's a record. Is it called a phonograph? I don't know if I'm I'm remembering the name of that right, but it's basically like a re it's a record, like a vinyl record, but it's a recording of this man talking. And he basically says that all these people have been gathered together because they've all committed a murder. And they were like, what? I've, I've never murdered anyone. And then one by one, he, he sort of explains why they're there and, and what happened. Slowly, one by one, they all get bumped off. <laughs> so I think it starts, I think the first person to die, I think it's the, oh, I won't tell you. I can't tell you. I was just about to tell you the whole storyline and I can't do that, can I? Because you might not have read it and you might want to read it. Ultimately, then, you know, it comes to its conclusion. And I was left thinking, what? What's going on? I don't understand. How can that be the conclusion? How, how, what happened? Who did it? What, what was going on? And then it was all revealed right at the very end, what had happened, you know, who'd masterminded it and and how they'd achieved it and I was like what I cannot have, you know I was really shocked and I just thought that's just so brilliant brilliant of Agatha Christie just to think all that up and to think about who who had done it and how they'd done it and how they'd achieved what they achieved. It was it was really brilliant. I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really easy read. I didn't find it taxing at all to read, you know, very easy language. There was lots of characters and usually I'm not mad on books that have loads of characters because I lose track of who's who. But I was all right with this. It was okay. Whether that's down to, I'm presuming that must be down to Agatha Christie's writing and the way that she maybe described the characters and that then cemented it in my brain. But I didn't have a problem in remembering who was who. So yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I read it probably over a couple of months actually just because I was reading it at night time and I was literally falling asleep after like 10 or 15 minutes because that's just what I do. But I think if you were to sit down and just read this, it would be a quick read. It's not a very long book. How many pages? It's 233 pages, but there's kind of not a huge amount of writing on each page, if you know what I mean. It's set in quite a lot from the edge. So I don't think it would take very long to read. You, read. you know, if you had a weekend, doing not a lot else you could definitely get it read I would say so I really really enjoyed this book if you like sort of cozy murder mysteries and you've not read this one then I would highly recommend it okay so it's time now to rinse our two skeins so I'm just going to get myself a nice bowl of soapy water. I'm using my favourite eucalyptus still, which is lavender. Just stick a glug of that in. There's quite a lot of suds there. So let's get this one first. This is the lovely Miss Havisham. Look at those speckles. Aren't they just lovely? Ooh. So I'm just gonna drop that in and you can just let them hang out for a bit if you want to. Um, you know, go and do something else for 10 minutes, but I tend to just get them rinsed. So I just give them a little sort of swim around. And what we're doing is we're getting rid of the citric acid and we're just also getting rid of just any tiny little dye particles that might be left but most importantly is, is getting rid of that citric acid that'll be fine so we're just gonna squidge out the water and then I just like to give it another squidge never don't ever wring your yarn just give it a nice squeeze like that okay so that's the first one so I'm going to get the other one washed now and then we will set them both to dry. Right, we have got our two beautiful skeins of yarn. Just gorgeous. So the, the Miss Havisham 
Oh, I love this. This, you know, the perfect yarn for any project, I would say. It'd be fantastic in a garment, wouldn't it? With just those little tiny specks. But also, I think a pair of socks, it would really show up a textured pattern, maybe, because we've just got those teeny tiny specks. So we're going to be using this one all the way through the project that I'm going to be knitting. And then we've got our fantastic main colour skein, which is the And Then There Were None. So you can see it started off with this gorgeous blue and we've got some lovely sort of deep sea blues here. But that green that we put in the alfalfa, even though you don't see it in there, it does give to some areas, you do get a slight greenish hue to it, which is lovely. And then some areas where we got that pink, it really shows up and that's lovely, just gorgeous. So I think it's absolutely lovely. I'm really pleased with it. So of course, what we need to do now is get these two lovely skeins caked up, don't we? Because then we can start knitting them into the project that certainly I'm going to be knitting. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So you can knit it if you want to, but there's absolutely no obligation to do that. Okay, so which one should we wind up first? I'm going to go with Miss Havisham. So I'm going to pop this onto the Swift. Oh, it's so lovely. You know when you open it up. Now I'm going to get some scissors and just snip off the ties. This is the one that's holding everything together. Now sometimes this is, is this coming from the outside? Yes, it is. That looks fine. Right. Let's wind away. Right, we have succeeded. It was a little bit perilous <laughs> because yes, I, I still haven't got a new ball winder, I know, but it's done okay. And we've got Miss Havisham here to go with it. So this is just gonna be so lovely. So I'm ready now to cast on. to cast on. I've actually already cast on <laughs> because it's quite a number of stitches so I just thought I'd get it cast on ready to join in the round. So I need to tell you what we're going to be knitting or what I'm going to be knitting. I'm going to knit a cowl and I've called it the reading corner cowl because that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be sat in my reading corner this whole sort of next few months I'm going to be reading those lovely books thinking about dyeing up yarn and whilst I'm doing that it might be that I'm listening to it on audiobook I can knit along with my cowl. So I'm starting off first of all with the Miss Havisham colourway so the bottom rib will be in Miss Havisham and already I'm loving this yarn because I've cast on here and I'm seeing lots of little specks already it's just fantastic. So I'll tell you what I've done. I've got a set of 3.25 millimeter needles. This is a 16 inch circular. I like the just plain Nipro Nova, but obviously you can use whatever you want. And I've cast on 168 stitches. So I've got those cast on already using long tail cast on. So I'm gonna join in the round now. So the bottom ribbing is just a broken one by one rib. So the first round is going to be knit one purl one, second round plain knit and I'm going to repeat that a total of eight times so that will be 16 rounds and then I'm going to repeat round one one more time. So I'm going to end my last round is a knit one purl one round, that's really important you end with the knit one purl one round. So 17 rounds in total, broken one by one rib. The reason I prefer, with cowls, I do always prefer to do a rib that is not gonna suck in because I like cowls to look straight rather than having ends that are gonna suck in. So that's why I usually use some form of broken, either a broken rib or some other element. So sometimes I put a little bit of lace in there 
but just something that's going to give me that rib to stop it curling but that is going to also give me nice straight edges I don't want it sucking in top and bottom so I've got all my stitches cast on here I'm just making sure that I haven't mobiest my stitches and I'm getting ready to join in the round so the way that I join in the round when I'm working on a short circular like this. So what I'm going to do, I've got a stitch marker here. To join in the round, what I like to do is to swap over the first and the last stitches. So this is the first one I cast on here on my left hand needle and the last one is over on my right hand needle. So I'm just gonna switch these. So to do this, sort of scoot your stitches right up to the end, then just let that first stitch you cast on just drop off here. Don't panic, nothing will happen. And then the last stitch you cast on, you can just pass over. And then with this needle, your right hand needle, just pop it into that stitch that we took off over here. And we've joined, effectively, we've joined in the round, in the round there. So pop your stitch marker on, find yourself a nice stitch marker. And we're ready now to start our first round. Now when you join in the round like that, it does produce a bit of tightness here, initially. So you just have to bear with that. And it, you know, on your second round, it sorts itself out. So my first round is a knit one purl one. So I'm just gonna start knitting. So that first stitch you'll find is a bit tight and the second one is a bit tight. Just because we moved, whoops. Just because we moved that stitch over. And then you'll be fine after that. And we are away. So as I said before, two round repeat. First round, just knit one purl one. Second round is plain knit. Repeat that eight times to give you 16 rounds and then just repeat round one once more. So you end with a knit one purl one round. So I will now, I'll bring in the other yarn and I'll just tell you what I'm going to do after I finish the rib. So here's my, and then there were none, colourway. So once, oh it's a bit of a messy skein that on top isn't it, don't look at that, that side's a bit neater. <laughs> so when I've finished my ribbing, what I will do is I will cut the Miss Havisham yarn and then I'm going to bring in my, and then there were none, yarn. Now what we're going to do, every time I, every time, I can say we, I mean me, you know what I mean. Every time we change colour, I'm going to do just a little two row defining feature, I suppose. Because rather than this just being a plain scarf, you know, a plain striped cowl, which of course is perfectly lovely, I wanted to just give each of the colour changes a little bit of definition. I found a really good way of doing that is to work just a little two row feature. So when we change yarn, so when I bring in my new yarn, I'm going to knit the first round and then the second round I'm going to knit one purl one. And then from rounds three to round 20 we'll just be plain knit. So the rounds that are with the book, the Yarny book colours are going to be 20 rounds and then I'll tell you how many rounds I'm going to work with this one in the next episode. Because in this first part all I'm going to do is I'm going to work the rib and I'm going to work my first coloured section. So just to say that again, I'm going to cut my yarn, I'm going to cut my Miss Havisham when I finish that rib, I'm going to bring in my, and then there were none yarn, First round I'm going to knit, second round I'm going to do knit one purl one and then rounds three to twenty just knit, okay? And by doing that little knit one purl one on the second round, not the first, you'll, you'll find that it just defines the edge and just gives a little bit of detail at each of the colour changes. It's really pretty, I've done it before on a cowl and I really love the way that it looked so I thought it would be perfect for working this one. So I'm going to carry on now and get working on my Reading Corner cowl. I'm so excited. So there we go. 
we have dyed up our gorgeous yarn inspired by this fantastic book we have wound it up we and we've cast on and we've started our reading corner cowl and i'm just so excited i love knitting cowls I think you all know, if, you, if you've been here a while, you know that I love knitting cows, and I haven't knit one for a while. So this just seemed the perfect project to show off all of these yarns and, you know, to sit in our little cosy corner, our little cosy reading corner, and we can maybe read a bit of the book, we can cast on our cow, or we can knit away on it as we work through the other books. So I really hope you enjoyed that and I will see you on the 16th of February for the next Yarny Book Club. Amazing! First episode, oh yes, gorgeous yarn, wonderful book, yes. and here's the amazing project. Here it is. Now, you can see the section here. I wanted to make sure you can see the yarn, how it knits up. So it's like super speckly. It's difficult because it's a bit scrunched up, but you get the idea. Beautifully speckly and just so lovely to knit with. So here's the main colour all skeined up. I'm so pleased with how it came out. It's so pretty. It's gorgeous. Yeah, really, really pretty. Perfect. And I've obviously got a massive chunk left here. It doesn't use very much. I really only just wanted to demonstrate what the yarn looked like knitted up. So knitting it into this cowl is perfect. And I've actually started the next stripe with the Miss Havisham just so that you can kind of see what it looks like when it transitions in doing those two rows. And it just adds some definition to the stripes. And the more that I do that, the more you will see that sort of clarity of definition of the stripes. And it's just the perfect thing. So really, really enjoying knitting this cowl and you'll see this develop through so the course of the whole year. all of the six books. Amazing. So that's going to be super fun, isn't yes. it? And what's the project called again? It's the Reading, it's the corner, reading cow. corner Cow. Yes. Yeah. Cool, sorry. Perfect. I didn't mean to step on your toes there. No, you didn't. I, I had to think on my feet then. I was worried that you might need a line. <laughs> just Don't remember, Kay, just go, line, line. Don't, I can't click my fingers. Oh, no, we're done for then. It doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> she did it. 2024, for the first time can't. ever, her fingers clicked. Look. If ever we could take a show that encapsulates all the things we love more, this is the one. Yeah. Apart from one element. Oh. And that element is gorgeous cakes. Ah. And we're going to deal with that when we see you next time. Yeah. Because, yes, Kay is back with a brand new baking series. Yes. It's called Kay's Classic Bakes. And over the course of six episodes, she's going to share with you some absolutely show-stopping cakes. Yeah. And we start next time with... Oh, am I going to tell Tell them, tell them. Oh, my goodness. Right, well, I'm starting in style, in, in true, like, gung-ho style baking situation, because we are going to be making a classic, and it's the lemon meringue pie. Amazing. That's coming next time. You're going to love it. I'm a brave baker, is all I'm saying. Kay's Classic Bakes, gorgeous dresses and equally gorgeous cakes. Yeah. Right now, though, it's time for the quickest endy bits in history. <laughs> so, first of all, we have a prize. Last year, we, we ran a year-long patron knit-along. It was the Socks Dash. Yes. We're continuing, actually, with a second year of we that. We are. Brand new competition started on yeah. the 1st of January. Yes. Patrons are knitting their gorgeous socks, Sock aren't they? Socks year two. Yeah, yes. yeah. Sock stash two. Yes. I like Take it. two. But who won sock stash one? What I've done is I've closed that thread obviously for 2023. That's now closed. We had three emailed entries, so I've added those on and I've done a random number generator for the winner. Random number generator gave me number 34 and that is Sarah and Sarah amazingly is in this country this wow. very rarely happens but Sarah is in Cornwall she's literally right at the end of the country yeah, yeah. I mean Cornwall fascinates me and I would love to go one day but yeah Sarah is Sarah Y 75 
on Ravelry. And so, Sarah, you have won this sock set that I dyed up, a special sock set. And the name I gave it was Patchwork Blanket. I did show you some of this knit up into a wristicler that I was working on a couple of episodes back. I've finished one of those actually now and I've just got the second one to do. But it's this beautiful sock set that you've won. So Sarah, that is yours. If you could email us, please, the address will be on the screen now with your full name and postal address. And I'm going to get that in the post, winging its way all the way down south to Cornwall. Wonderful. Well, well done. done, Sarah. And we'll be talking more about this year's Socks yes. Fest in our next patron-only show, which I mentioned earlier on in today's show, yes. which is the 28th of January. We'll tell you all about how you can watch that in our next video show, yeah. which is out in a couple of weeks. And I've got huge prize things Wonderful. for that one, which I'll tell you about then as well. Already mentioned too, the radio show is back next week. We'll be reviewing our festive season, telling you about some of the things we're going to change yeah. this year. Oh, yes. yes. We're also going to be talking about all the things that we're looking forward to this year. And there's lots. lots. Yes, it's going lots. to be so cool. Yeah. And folks, that pretty much is it. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, It's everybody. been wonderful to see you. It has. What a period of shows we're running into, because every show now, until February, new show now, another new show from you. Yeah. Another new show from, from me. From Dan. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is it now. We're in Bakery Bears season. We are. Bring it we on. Are. So thank you so much for watching. Thank we'll you see everybody. you in two weeks with more. See you soon. Bye. 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 Sitting and knitting, standing cable, take a not quitting for men and cable bakery pairs. They'll take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bakery pair. You'll find yourself in a castle while watching the bakery pairs. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery pairs. Sign your shelf for once in